Here's how I painted an antique. Hi, I'm Lisa with Lisa Bean Designs, and today we're gonna be painting this antique chest with Sweet Pickens milk paint. This antique had a few slight problems, but overall it was in pretty good condition. So I pulled out the crud cutter to give it a good cleaning and scrubbing. I wiped it all down and then I pulled out my vinegar and water solution and wiped it down again. And then that's really when you get to notice what needs to be fixed. I pulled out the Bondo. I knew that I needed the Bondo for the top, but I found some um, areas on the side that needed some help. It's a two-part solution and so you have to mix it up. You don't have much time. It hardens very quickly. Someone had done a really bad job of fixing that drawer, so I sanded down the excess glue and I bondoed the sides and I let it dry. Then I looked at the hardware. It was really interesting. What animal do you see there? I went ahead and I soaked it in vinegar, Blue Dawn, and water, and then I scrubbed it, and I was able to get this one clean, but it was very discolored. I sanded down the Bondo and I scuff sanded the sides because they were really, really glossy. I pulled out the vinegar water solution and I cleaned it again. I decided to take out Salvation Solution because I'm using milk paint and the sides were awfully glossy. There was also a little bit of residue coming up so I figured I should prime it. This primer is very liquidy and I wanted to go over the Bondo, of course, and make sure that it was well primed. I did two coats of the Salvation Solution while my dogs slept and played all around me. Before applying your second coat, make sure that it dries very well and then it's really suggested that you wait 24 hours before you apply your paint. True Milk Paint comes in a bag and it comes in powder form. All of the directions can be found right behind the bag. They can also be found on my website. I wasn't sure if the paint was gonna chip because I've never tried milk paint with Salvation Solution. So I mixed my paint as directed, one to one ratio. I like to put hot water first and then the powder and mix it really well. After you've mixed it to a milkshake consistency, it's best to use an immersion blender and I did later go ahead and hit it with the immersion blender. There are so many green colors in the Sweet Pickens milk paint line. I'm sure you could find the right color for you. This particular um, chest is for a client of mine. She gave me three different colors. I've never used the artichoke color, so I wanted to go ahead and paint it that color. Because I wanted to control how much chipping, I went ahead and I added more extra bond than I normally do. I usually just do a splash or two but I went ahead and I did it. Now it will congeal. You need to mix it really quickly and you can always add more water. So there's a few things with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. First of all, it's zero VOC. If you use it with hemp oil or the brand new tongue oil, it makes it food safe. You can use it for baby cribs. You can use it for serving platters. You can use it for anything in the kitchen. I find that you get more lumps when you don't use the immersion blender and, and when I add the extra bond. But in this case, that's what I wanted. I wanted to camouflage the wear and tear. I wanted to add to it, enhance it, make it look worn. And I love the way that it turned out. Your first coat of milk paint is not going to be full coverage. You're gonna need two, and if it's a light color, possibly three coats but it goes on super quick. There is a slight odor, but it's because of the milk uh, protein that's used to make the milk paint. But it's again, it's zero VOC and it's good to use around your animals. 
So I had used the Salvation Solution on the drawers and then I decided that I wanted them raw wood. So I used my carbide scraper and I removed the Salvation Solution and the varnish that had previously been on there. And this carbide scraper did a great job. I was even able to get in those grooves between that and the sanding uh, disc. And I use this other carbide scraper that has like a little bit of a detailed edge. And between those three things, it worked perfectly. Now it's time for the second coat. My second coat, as you see, it's a lot creamier. It is, it is very liquidy. You could control how thick or how thin you can do washes with milk paint based off of how you mix it but I really recommend using hot water. And let it sit for about 15 minutes before you use it so that it can thicken up. My animals loved the smell of this milk paint. They kept wanting to lick it. It was hysterical. But you could see the difference of when it was wet and dry. The milk paint has natural highs and lows and you're gonna see that as it starts drying and especially after I seal it. Here is the brand new tongue oil. Because this was a very old piece, I noticed that the inside was very dry and brittle. So instead of using the tongue oil, which what I had planned to do to seal the entire piece, I put the tongue oil on the inside of the cabinet. and wait until you see how it just came to life. Unbelievable. Gorgeous, gorgeous wood. And tongue oil penetrates inside of the wood and becomes a rock hard finish. After two weeks, it's food safe. There's so many things that you can do with the tongue oil. Now, I'm decided to use the beeswax, which I absolutely love the smell. It's a lemon fresh scent. It is a good, hard, durable finish. And I waxed the entire piece with the beeswax in clear. And here you can really see, this is all, it's wet, fresh wax, but you can see those highs and lows. After it dried, maybe two days later, I went ahead and I buffed it with my buffing brush. It makes it a lot easier on your muscles. So I changed it up again and I decided to use proper. And I did a thin ratio, more water, then powder, I wanted to do a wash on the drawers because this wood was very red and I wanted to tone it down and I've never tried a wash with the milk paint so I wanted to see what it was gonna do. It was great, I just didn't love it. The marble slab was throwing me off so I decided to try decoupage and I auditioned several scenarios with napkins and this decoupage paper that I actually created and I had printed on Zazzle. I would have done that black one if it was mine, but this was for a client. So next I took Flower Sack by Sweet Pickens, I mixed it up, got a nice consistency, and I painted the drawers because I didn't like it. I needed something to go with that white marble slab. It just wasn't working for me. It probably would have been lovely. And I decided to go ahead and paint it, paint the sides of the drawers, and then decoupage the bottom two drawers. This is an 18 pound tissue paper, 20 by 30, so I still have a scrap left over. I used Sweet Pickens Top Coat, which is now discontinued because we have the brand new final finish and I have a lot of this and it is a great decoupage medium. Any water-based top coat can be used as a decoupage medium. After I got it all down, I used my sanding sponge to 
take off the excess of the paper, make sure my ends are nice and adhered. I apply more of the top coat and this had keyholes, um, appliques, so I went ahead and I cut them out after the paper was nice and dry. And I make sure that I get the top coat or decoupage medium on there. I did several coats to cover up the paper so that I could make sure that it was gonna adhere very well. I did the bottom drawer and then I sealed it, like I said, a couple of times. I wanted a smooth edge. I don't like lines, so I went ahead and I distressed the paper. I cut out some pieces of napkin just to give it a little oomph on the sides of the drawer so when you open it there's a little surprise. And I painted all the sides of the drawers and I used this napkin. I'm going to show you how I cut it using a water pen. You could use a brush with water and you just cut it all off. So I did several napkins so that I could do all of the sides of the drawers and the top two drawers as well. I save the text that's on there so that I can use it for future projects. I sand back anywhere where the paint was on the drawers that I didn't want it to be on there. And then I decided I really wanted a crisp lines. So I cut the paper and then I applied more of the top coat to get it in there nice and adhered. And I painted over my paper and then I used the wipe to just take off some of it so that it could look aged. And I painted over all of my sides and then I dry brushed the middle of the drawers because I kept looking at it. I was like, it's too white, it's too crisp. And I went through a process of grunging it up and changing it up so that it made sense. Because this is an antique, it shouldn't look new. Then I sealed it again with Sweet Pickens top coat. I'm about to do something. I have no idea if I'm gonna ruin it or not, but it's just paint. I keep changing up what I'm doing because I'm not so happy with this um, how it's turning out. I'm liking where it's going, but it's this is too new and we need to get it looking more old. So I'm gonna try something. I've never done this before with milk paint, so let's give it a go. I've got the zinc that I tried from last night. I've got proper right here. I just got some creamy in. I didn't have this color in stock. got hot water. Got this white oh well. Got this. I've got this creamy. And I know she says she doesn't like gray, but maybe she doesn't know that she really does like gray. But I may need some contrast, and then we're gonna do brown wax anyway. I've got so much of this. Milk paint goes bad quick. So I'm gonna grab some wipes. And I have this if I need more water, and I've got the white right here if I need to add more. And I've got some just plain water if I need. I need something. I'm gonna try using the sponge. This is already sealed, so it's just too white. It's too crisp, and I don't like that at all. All right, let's start with the medium color. I looked better not sealed. Maybe I should just 
after this, you just wipe it all the way on. I went back and forth using my sponge, using my brushes with the three colors that I created a wash out of, the proper, zinc, and the creamy, until I liked it. There's no right or wrong way. I just kept going and I would dry it in between because I didn't want to blend the colors. And once I dried it, I would add another layer and ultimately, I love the way that it turned out. I was very, very pleased doing a wash with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. Guys, wait until the end so that you could see my client with her piece. She absolutely loved it. She about cried and that always brings me joy. I love it when clients see their piece for the first time and they cry. She told me to surprise her and I think she really was. And I was nervous because I knew she wasn't expecting decoupage. She was expecting it all to be green, but it I wanted it to be perfect for her. And so I just kept going and I told her before she saw it, if you don't like it, it's just paint. I can, I can paint over it. And um, my husband said I shouldn't have said that, but I want people to know it's okay. Not everyone's gonna like the same thing that I like. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to ask me any questions. Comment below and if you have questions about milk paint, let me know. I went ahead and I applied Sweet Pickens Clear Wax over the drawers. And I, had, I mean, I had already sealed it with the Sweet Pickens top coat, but I wanted to add black wax or dark wax. I auditioned both and I ended up going primarily with the black. And all of the Sweet Pickens waxes smell delicious, like lemon. You definitely need to try it. It's awesome. And I just use my chip brushes uh, for this part. These are available on my website as well as all of the Sweet Pickens products. The dark wax, I mean the black wax really makes a difference. It makes it pop and it made it all come together. Now I thought that I recorded this but I actually added one more thing I'm going to show you here. This is the before and now here's the after. Once I got the hardware on there, I, I realized that I needed to add a little bit of that gold color. I used Posh Chalk Patina in gold to go over all of the hardware because I didn't like the discoloration. And then with my finger, I applied it throughout the entire body of the chest and it made it all come together. That was the ticket. I kept staring at it and I love that gold looks amazing with the artichoke and you see those highs and those lows and it's going in a laundry room, mud room, bathroom that has lots of green in it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this transformation. I know some people believe that you shouldn't paint antiques but this is my client's piece and she loves it and she wanted it painted. It was her first painted piece. I think I won her over. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an incredibly blessed day. Ciao.